Ladies and gentlemen, this is an introduction to the new mathematics T syllabus for the STPM examination starting year 2012. The mathematics T syllabus is designed to provide a framework for a pre-university course that enables candidates to develop the understanding of mathematical concepts and mathematical thinking and acquire skills in problem solving and the applications of mathematics related to science and technology. The objectives of the syllabus are to enable candidates to use mathematical concepts, terminology and notation, display and interpret mathematical information in tabular, diagrammatic and graphical forms. Identify mathematical patterns and structures in a variety of situations. Use appropriate mathematical models in different contexts. Apply mathematical principles and techniques in solving problems. Carry out calculations and approximations to an appropriate degree of accuracy. Interpret the significance and reasonableness of results. Present mathematical explanations, arguments and conclusions. The content of the syllabus is divided into three main areas. Algebra and geometry, calculus and statistics. The first topic of functions covers composite and inverse functions involving algebraic, exponential, logarithmic and trigonometric functions. This topic also covers equations and inequalities including modular signs in simple cases. Topic 2 consists of sequences and series including binomial expansions. Topic 3 deals with matrices. It is expected that the inverse of a matrix is found by using elementary row operations. This topic also deals with systems of linear equations. It is expected that a system of linear equations is solved by applying the Gaussian elimination. In this connection, the row epsilon form and the reduced row epsilon form of a matrix are normally defined as follows. A matrix is said to be in row epsilon form if it has the first two properties below. A matrix is said to be in reduced row epsilon form if, in addition, it has the last two properties below. Any rows with all zero entries are below rows with non-zero entries. The leading non-zero entry of a row with non-zero entries occurs in the column further to the right than the leading non-zero entry of the higher row. The leading non-zero entry of a row is a 1. Every column that contains a leading non-zero entry has 0 as all other entries. Topic 4 is about complex numbers in Cartesian form and polar form. The topic of analytic geometry deals with conics, excluding eccentric city. Parametric representations are required. Topic 6 covers vectors in two and three dimensions, including scalar and vector products. This topic also covers vector geometry involving lines and planes. Topic 7 consists of the limits and continuity of functions. The precise definition of a limit is not required. The topic of differentiation covers derivatives, including derivatives of functions defined parametrically. This topic also covers application of differentiation. The point of inflection does not include the case 
where the second derivative is undefined. Problems concerning rates of change and optimization problems are included. The topic of integration consists of antiderivatives, techniques of integration, and definite integrals, including those involving trigonometric functions. The applications of integration include the area of a region and the volume of a solid of revolution. The method of cylindrical shells is not required. Topic 10 deals with first-order differential equations with separable variables and the first-order linear differential equations. Topic 11 is on Maclaurin series. Topic 12 covers the solution of equations using an iterative formula and the newton raphson method. This topic also covers numerical integration using the trapezium rule. The topic of data description covers the representations of data, measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion, and skewness. The quartiles of ungrouped data are usually determined as follows. 1. Arrange the ungrouped data in ascending order. 2. Find the value of Pn where P is proportion and N is sample of population size. 3. If Pn is not an integer, round it up to the next integer and determine the corresponding ordered value. If Pn is an integer, say K, determine the average of the K and K plus 1 ordered value. The topic of Probability includes the probability of a combined event, conditional probability, and the rule of total probability. Topic 15 covers discrete and continuous random variables. This topic also covers binomial, Poisson, and normal distributions. Topic 16 covers the sampling distribution of the mean and the sampling distribution of the proportion. This topic also covers point estimates and confidence intervals. The T distribution is not required. Topic 17 consists of hypothesis tests concerning the population mean and population proportion. A hypothesis test concerning the population mean for a population with unknown variance is restricted to the case of a large sample where an approximate normal distribution is used since the t-distribution is not included in the syllabus. The last topic of chi-square tests consists of goodness of fit tests and tests of independence in contingency tables. A coursework component will be introduced into the new mathematics T syllabus. Coursework is intended to enable candidates to carry out mathematical investigation and mathematical modeling, so as to enhance the understanding of mathematical processes and applications and to develop soft skills. The coursework comprises assignments set down by the Malaysian Examinations Council. A complete assignment report for an assignment submitted by a candidate should be structured as follows. Introduction, methodology, results and conclusion. Assignment reports are assessed based on the criteria of introduction, methodology, results, conclusion and communication. Viva sessions are conducted based on the criteria of understanding of assignments and communication. The examination of Mathematics T consists of four papers. Papers 1, 2 and 3 are written tests. 
based on topics 1 to 6, topics 7 to 12, and topics 13 to 18, respectively. Each paper is divided into Section A and Section B. Section A contains six compulsory questions of variable marks. Section B contains two questions of 15 marks each, one of which is to be answered. The total mark of each paper is 60, and the time duration is one and a half hours. Paper 4 is coursework, comprising three assignments, each based on topics 1 to 6, topics 7 to 12, and topics 13 to 18. The percentage weighting of Paper 4 is 20%. I hope this briefing will be of help to both teachers and students in understanding the new STPM Mathematics T syllabus. All the best. Thank you.